Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the top five desktop environments according to me. Now, that last part is the most important part because really desktop environments are really a very personal preference. You like what you like. Uh, if I had to give you one advice that you could take away from this video, piece of adv advice that you could take away from this video, I would say it's use all the desktop environments. Don't be afraid to go through and install as many as you can on the distro of your choice and use them all. Use them for a couple weeks each. Use them for a couple days each, whatever. And find the one that you like. That's the best way to do it. Once you find one you like, stick on it for a while. And then if you get tired of it, switch again. There's no problems with it. That's the best thing about Linux is that you can make these choices and it doesn't. you're not narrowed in and tied on to one, exact, one choice once you've made it. That being said, if you want to know which ones that I enjoy the most, that's what I'm going to do today. So uh, we're going to do some this all on Endeavor OS. Um, it's in a virtual ma machine using Vert Manager, so the performance may not be all that great. It's in a virtual machine, so just keep that in mind as we go along. Before, hey, before we jump into the list, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We record videos seven days a week. We do a podcast once a week. We have all this great and amazing content that you can get if you just simply subscribe. So subscribe, will you? Let's get onto the list. Number five is GNOME. Now, if you've watched the video or watched the channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I'm not a big GNOME fan. Uh, this is straight up GNOME. Uh, Ubuntu also has its... Uh, own flavor of GNOME that also really plays in kind of ties into this choice here so either way um, if you're um, let's actually go ahead and make this full screen if I can um, view full screen there we go that's better um, and this is just this is GNOME as you can tell it's like I said, it's slow on Vert, Vert Manager I have to work kind of tweak the, the settings but if you're using it on, on metal it's really fast these days. It's not as slow as it used to be. It doesn't use as much resources. Right now it's using even a virtual machine. It's only using 213 uh, megabytes. That's not bad for a, 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 a desktop environment. GNOME has the best, I think, suite of applications that are developed for it in terms of design. They're also the most, they're, they're, the, they're the simplest uh, of the uh application suites because in comparison to the KDE or you know plasma you're not going to get as many options you're, you're going to be kind of tied into whatever gnome's vision of those applications are but the suite itself is very good it has maps they have to do applications calendars music players you name it gnome has it and that's really good it's number five on my list mostly for personal preferences i don't care for the layout all that much if i'm going to use a desktop environment i want my launcher to be available all the time. I don't want to have to press a key in order to get to it. Um, also, despite the fact that it is much faster than it used to be, it is still slow. I, and like I said, this is a virtual machine, so this is not uh, a good representation of what GNOME can do. But even on metal, it's slower than some of the other desktop environments that are on this list. So that is number five. Number four is the Cinnamon desktop. Now, Cinnamon is m mostly known as a Linux Mint uh, creation. It was created by the Mint team as kind of a GTK3 version of Ubuntu Mate, or kind of, it still kind of lives by the old GNOME 2 you know, theory on design and stuff. Uh, if you're coming from Windows, I'm going to say this right now, chances are you will want to use cinnamon uh, it's the least complicated out of all of them uh, that looks like windows so it, it, it also it ups the customizability of your desktop from that you get with gnome while maintaining uh, or without going so far as being the settings beast that is plasma so it, it is also very fast is well maintained uh, it has access to all the GNOME applications. Probably, you know, most of the time when you're installing Cinnamon on a desktop and or a, on a distro, you'll get all the GNOME apps, and it fits in, and it's themable, and it's 
a very good way to get your toes in on Linux without being out of your comfort zone if you're coming from Windows. Uh, personally, I I like it. It's fast. Again, this is a virtual machine. The fact that it's taking apparently 10 minutes to start the file manager is a little um, interesting. <laughs> um, but like, like I said, the virtual machine is very fast on 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 hardware, so you don't have to worry about the problems that I'm having. Uh, and the, and the design is very good. It, here on uh, Endeavor, they've chosen their own little theme. It's very good. Mint has its own kind of theme. It's like I said, it's more customizable than GNOME, which is why it's number four on the list. Okay, number three is one that I can't show you, so I'm still technically in Cinnamon. Uh, number three is P Pantheon uh, Desktop. Um, it's available almost exclusively on elementary OS, which I do not have installed. I was going to install it, but it's not working on Vert Manager like at all. <laughs> so what can I do? Um, if you're coming from Mac and you're most familiar with the, the Mac design, you know, way of doing things, uh, Pantheon is the best way to, uh, of getting your toes wet into Linux. It's responsive. It has the best design out of all of them, at least out of the box. You can make Plasma look like pretty much whatever you want, but out of the box, Elementary OS is gorgeous. I think it's a little outdated, but and that's just my opinion. I don't care for a lot of what o Elementary OS does. That's the biggest problem with this one and why it's not higher up on the list. Because it's tied to Elementary OS, you kind of have to use it. Now, it is available on like Arch Linux, but you have to jump through some hoops in order to get it installed. So just keep that in mind. Uh, like I said, I can't show it to you. I, I, I'm, I am sorry about that. Okay, number two is XFCE. Now, I know what Linux enthusiasts are going to say. XFCE, oh my god, that looks like it's from the 1990s. XFCE is amazing if you're running on low-end hardware, but it's also pretty good if you're running on high-end hardware. Um, it's just overall very good. Yes, the development development on it is very slow. Yes, out of the box most of the time it looks like it comes from the 1990s. Um, but sh once you get past that and go through and theme it the way you want it to look, it looks very good. It's the, one of the most customizable desktops out there that uses GTK3. Uh, I think it's even more customizable than something like Cinnamon. It's definitely more customizable than uh, Pantheon or Gnome. Uh, because both of those require actual hacks in order to customize, whereas uh, XFCE can be themed right out of the box. It's like I said, it, it runs very well. It only uses like I don't know, probably 400 megabytes out of the box. You know, so it's very, very, very good. Um, this is just what uh, the XFCE version of Endeavor looks like. It's pro this is probably the one that will look the most different on every single distro because every single distro does something different with XFCE. Uh, sometimes the panel's on the bottom, sometimes it's on the top. I've seen some of them on the side. Uh, the themes are different. Some of them stick with the more old-fashioned, like Windows 98 style themes. Some of them use the the mint th the minty themes. And then there was a reason why for that is because it's very very customizable. It doesn't have the hackiness of customizing the things that GNOME and Pantheon both have. Uh, and overall, it's just very, very good. Uh, it would probably be my number one if num my number one didn't exist. So I used XFCE as my daily driver for many, many months when I was still using desktop environments. And overall, I just don't think you could go wrong with using XFCE on pretty much. I have, matter of fact, on every Linux distro that I have, XFCE is still the one that I install. Um, so... If you're using a desktop environment, chances are you probably also have a, or if you're using a window manager, excuse me, uh, you probably also have a desktop environment installed, you know, kind of as a backup. XFC, it's always my backup. It's lightweight. It doesn't have all the crazy dependencies that Plasma has. Um, and it's just a, a pleasure to use. Even on this VM, I mean, you've been seeing some of the, the problems I've been having in this VM to get things running fast. Um, it's still, I mean, it's still slow. Obviously, the the graphics thing is is not great, but things appear and disappear pretty quick. Pretty quick. I mean, for a virtual machine that has been having problems. Anyways, so let's moving on to number one. You probably guessed what my number one is. Uh, yeah. So moving on to number one.
Okay, number one for me is plasma, uh, KDE plasma, and it's that reason for number number of reasons. Once it is by far, I mean, it's not even a competition. It's by far the most customizable. It has come leaps and bounds in terms of uh, performance. It's very very quick and snappy now. Not so much on this virtual machine, but again, the virtual machine's just been giving me problems all day because I don't know anything about virtual man virt manager, so I'm still learning that. Um, I also couldn't get it to go full screen uh, for whatever reason, but it, whatever. Um, really, it's the customizability that makes Plasma amazing. If we if we take a look here at the settings app, there's just settings upon settings upon settings upon settings. Now, obviously, that also has, comes with the draw, downside of complexity. So the, it's by far, I mean, again, not even close compared to the other ones on the list. It's by far the most complex of all the desktop environments that we've listed today. I'm also considering it's the most complex of any desktop environment. I don't know of an, a single other one uh, that has this level of complexity. I don't know of another one that all is is as customizable as uh, this is either. So it, it's kind of a trade-off depending. So the question becomes, if you're a new user, which one should you use? Now, I go back to my advice and I say use them all. But if you're going to choose one of the ones that are on this list, I would choose XFCE, honestly, even though I put Plasma number one. If you're a new user. If you're someone who's used Linux for a little while, however, I would go through and say use Plasma because it allows you to seriously get your chops into, you know, customizing things to make it, you know, the way you want it to look. And that's just, I mean, it's just, I mean, there's, there's no getting around the fact that Plasma allows you to do as more, much more customization built in out of the box than any of the others. It's just, that's just the way it is. So those are the top five desktop environments. I know I didn't go into a lot of detail on them. Uh, that's just the, I, I could probably do an hour on each of these. The one that I like personally the least is probably Pantheon but that has nothing to do with the desktop environment itself is mostly because I don't care for elementary OS uh, so I, since I probably should put that at number five but I put it at number three because it's, the, it's very pretty it's prettier than uh, GNOME and uh, Cinnamon I have problems with Linux Mint as everybody knows so th th this is just the, the, the way I rank them Come 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 at me another day. I probably would rank them in in a, in a different order. But these are probably the five. Now the one that I didn't mention that is actually pretty good that I, I kind of forgot about until, uh, I was doing this video is Mate. Um, and Mate is a GNOME two fork, uh, and is very good. The reason why it's not on this is like I said, mostly because I forgot about it. And I think that's the way with most people is they've kind of forgotten that Mate exists. Um. And that's just the same thing. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, and you can do so in any number of ways, you can subscribe to the channel, which we highly, I highly encourage you to do. You can also go to patreon.com slash and support us that way. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.